If you're a professional photographer, it's highly likely you've got one, if not many, hard drives gathering dust on your computer desk. These hard drives will hold hundreds, maybe thousands of images you've taken over the years, and these stock files can come in very handy for creating a double exposure image. We all remember this technique from the days of film, and most modern cameras offer photographers the ability to shoot multiple exposures overlaying the files. But by creating the technique in post-processing, you afford yourself far more control over the finished result. This is a great technique to breathe new life into your portraits, and Affinity Photo has all the tools needed to attempt this technique. Although it may look a little complicated, it's actually just a case of making a selection, copying, and pasting a secondary image to merge with your portrait, and then adding masks so you can control the flow of the pixels. All in all, if you follow our guide, you should be able to create your own double exposure in 10 minutes. It's worth noting before we start that the results of this technique are very dependent on the images you are using, so treat this tutorial as a guide to walk you through, but obviously leave room to fine tune your own images. So we're ready to start and we have our portrait image and the image we want to create our double exposure with. Our first job is to make a selection. So head to the left of the interface and click on the selection brush tool. And the keyboard shortcut for this is W. All you need to do now is drag the mouse in and around your subject. And you can change the size of this brush using the square bracket keys. Affinity Photo is really amazingly good at picking up the edges of your subject. And don't forget to include all the fine hairs and areas of skin around your subject. Take your time with the selection tool because if you make a mistake, you're only going to have to go back and reselect this area. Now, if you need to take areas away that have been picked up by the selection brush, it's not a problem. Just hold the Alt button, click, and these will be taken away by Affinity Photo. Once more, it could pay dividends to actually zoom in using Control and Plus to get a better view of all the important areas that you want to select. And as this will take a while, I'm just going to speed up the rest of my selection so you don't have to sit through it. Once you're happy with the selection, head over to the Layers panel. And at the bottom of the Layers panel, you'll find an icon with a circle within a square. And this is the Mask Layer option. And once you're ready, click on this option and it will mask your selection. We want to totally get rid of the background from the original portrait, so we're going to hit Ctrl and D to deselect the selection. You'll see the marching ants will disappear. And now we're going to rasterize this layer by heading back to the layer stack, right clicking on the layer, scrolling down and hitting rasterize. At this stage you can also hit V, which is the move tool, and reposition your subject if you want to in the canvas. I don't need to do that for my portrait though. It's now time to head over to our secondary image, and in my case it's a beautiful shot of a starry sky, and we're gonna select this and copy and paste it onto our portrait image. So to do this, we're gonna select all the pixels by pressing Ctrl and A. We're gonna copy the pixels to the clipboard by clicking Ctrl and C, and then we can close this image down. When you're ready to paste the image, just press Ctrl and V. It's worth noting that you can actually rename your layers, and this might come in handy later, so I'm going to rename this as a secondary image. So now things start to get a little bit more complicated, so we're going to head back to the Layers panel, over to our Portrait layer. Let's turn this one off for the moment. And if we hover over our Portrait layer, hold Command and double-click, it reveals the original selection we made around our portrait subject. What we're going to do now is select our secondary image layer. And you'll see the selection still there. It shows the outline of our portrait subject. 
we're going to head back down to the layers panel and select the mask icon one more time. And you see how the secondary image has immediately taken the shape of our portrait subject. So we're going to add a background and to do this we're going to head over to the toolbar and select the rectangle tool. The keyboard shortcut for this is U. Zoom out a little bit and we're going to draw out a rectangle shape over our frame. You can choose whatever colour you want for this but in my case it's going to be white. Now the important thing with this step is to then drag this layer to the bottom of the layer stack. So we're going to put it below the background. And you'll see the transparent pixels around the portrait subject have changed from transparent to white. Again, it could be any colour of your choice. Our next step is to head back to the layers panel, select the background image and duplicate this layer by pressing Ctrl and G or Apple and G if you're using an Apple Mac. We're then going to drag this duplicate copy to the top of the layer stack and I'm going to rename it Duplicate Background. We're then going to change the blending mode of this top layer from Normal to Lighten. And you'll see already how this changes the way the secondary image layer below it is visible. There may be areas of this top layer that you want to be more visible. And to do this we're going to add a mask. So I'm going to click on the mask and you can then use the brush tool to brush out pixels. I don't need to do this too much with my image, but it could come in handy for your image. Click Ctrl and D to get rid of the marching ants. We're going to duplicate our secondary image layer one more time using Ctrl and J, or Apple and J if you're using a Mac. And we're going to drag it down the layer stack just above the rectangle layer. We're going to highlight the mask thumbnail and we're going to delete the mask. Obviously this then covers the rest of the frame providing a background. Then it's a case of lowering its opacity to make your subject stand out and suit the desired look that you're going for. All we need to do now is click File, Export, and you can then save the file in your chosen format.